Hi everyone, it's Paige. Um, today I am going to be talking talking to you guys about levels in Photoshop. But while people are waiting to get on, I thought that I would uh, go ahead and show you some pictures from my daughter's birthday. So my youngest turned one um, right around Thanksgiving, and we had her party last. <clears throat> well, now two weekends ago, and this is the cake that my father-in-law made. How adorable is that? Like, I think it's the cutest thing ever, um, and I just wanted to share with someone, and then I have to show you how cute my little unicorn baby is. We call her our unicorn baby because um, I had uh, miscarriages and fertility treatments and all kinds of stuff um, trying to get pregnant with um, my oldest two, and then she came out of nowhere. It was a complete surprise. So there she is. She's our little unicorn baby and um, eating her little unicorn cake. I think it's so adorable. So um, I'm going to give people a few minutes to get on. I went live like a little early. I was planning on starting at 930. So went live a little early, give people time to come on. Um, but we are going to be talking about levels in Photoshop. We're going to be doing some edits. Um, and they're actually really quick edits. Levels is super, um, super, super powerful. And so if you are on and you're here, if you could go ahead and say hi, so I know that you're on and that you're here and you're watching, that would be awesome. If you have any questions while I'm going through stuff, then I will um, go ahead and try to answer those um, as I go or... Um, Um, as I go, all right, I got one, one like, so someone's here. Um, so I'm going to give people just a couple more minutes. And of course, in true, in true fashion, my baby, who I just put down for a nap, I hear is woken up, um, which is awesome. Hello. Actually, I don't know. I don't hear her. I think my voice must have startled her because it was, it was like super quiet in the house. And then I started talking. I don't, I think she's going to go back to sleep. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see. All right. Um, so this is real life. <laughs> like Nothing ever goes to plan. Of course. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab her and I'll be right back. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And Adeline is gonna sit here with us while we edit. She's gonna be a Photoshop genius by the time she's five. All right, so um, what I am using today for editing is, um, is Levels. And it's a really powerful tool in Photoshop. And I'm just going to show you. Um, so this is this is the picture that was sent to me. And um, these are member pictures that I'm editing. I know. Is it a scary bug? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so this is the picture that I started out with. And then you can see here are my changes here. I'm going to turn these on. And this is what I ended up with afterwards. So um, you can see with just two small changes, I was really able to bring a lot of brightness and um, really brighten up those shadows. Now, just because I, you know, I don't feel, I mean, 
Photoshop is awesome and it does a lot of good things, but I also feel like I should also give you guys some pointers for um, things that we want to avoid when we're taking our pictures. So when you're taking pictures and if you notice that there's a lot of shadowing over, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but over here on this side of um, the tag, there's a lot of shadowing. What you want to do is you want to reflect some light there. So you can do that by either adding a light over here so that there's light coming from both directions, or you can do that with a reflector. You can even make your own reflector. Um, sometimes just a piece of poster board, like the foam poster board that like stands up on its own is a really good reflector. And if you need even more light, you can just throw a sheet of um, aluminum foil over it and that's gonna be even more reflective. So it's not something that has to be expensive. Now, I don't think reflectors are that expensive. You can get them for like $10, $15 on Amazon. So um, they're not super expensive, but uh, you know, that's something that you wanna watch. So if you're seeing that you're getting some, some really intense shadowing, um, you don't want to count on Photoshop to be able to fix that. You want to be able to try to fix that before you bring it into Photoshop. So um, I see we have a few people watching now. So let's go ahead and let's get to the, the, the goods. And let me show you how we're going to edit this in Photoshop. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to levels. So... Um, let me just close these windows here. I have like little control windows up for going live and then they were in my way. All right, so um, you can see here, this is our levels layer and up here where it says properties, this is actually the control for levels. So if I move this middle right here, this is the midtones and you can see the midtones are, um, the midtones and the shadows, that's really brightening up everything else. And that's great, and that looks good um, for everything except for the tag itself, right? So you're probably like, okay, Paige, like, that's not what I'm looking for. But this is the great thing about Photoshop is that you have layers, so um, and you have masks. So you'll see when I added that levels, it made this little white square, and that is a layer mask. And with layer mask, what is white is revealed. So right now the whole layer mask is white. So you're seeing the effect on the entire image. And what is black is concealed. So what I can do is I can take my brush. I can make sure that it's black. So you can see here um, I have, I'm on the um, layer mask and my brush is now white and black, except I have white here and I need black. So I'm just gonna click X on my keyboard. So now it's made black the um, foreground color. And I'm doing this with one hand now. Um, you can see here the opacity of my brush is 20% so I can build this up. And then my brush, if I go to my brush tool here, you can see that the hardness is zero. So those are really important things um, to remember. I am going to bring the opacity up just a little bit. I don't think I need it at 20. But if you don't start, um, I'm going to bring it up to like 50. If you don't start at 100, it makes it easier to kind of build things up. And so now what I'm doing is I'm brushing over, and I'm doing this one-handed right now because I'm holding a baby, so it does make it a little bit more difficult um, than if I could not be one, one-handed with the wrong hand here. Um, but you can see that I'm painting those details of the tag back in. And you can make your brush bigger if you need to. So to make your brush bigger, you just use the bracket keys on your keyboard, and that's gonna make your brush bigger. So I'm just brushing those details back on. You don't touch the keyboard. Okay. So you can see now I've brought the details of the tag back. Um, I did get a little sloppy here. I need to go back over these shadows. So I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller and press X on my keyboard, which is gonna bring the white back. And then I'm just gonna paint off those shadows again. So you can see already just with one layer, one little thing we've made a huge a huge change so if you if you see the change you like the change give me a thumbs up it just helps for, for like algorithms and stuff i really don't need that much positive reinforcement but um it does help facebook send this out to more people okay yeah yeah adeline says she needs positive reinforcement she likes it a lot all right 
So, um, so now the I'm going to add another levels layer because you can see, and I don't know, maybe you can't see um, here. I just accidentally clicked that. Um, but the, the lettering here is a little washed out still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another, another levels layer. Yeah. She's excited about this. She's like, this is my favorite part, guys. And I'm going to bring up this black arrow here, which is the blacks, and I'm going to boost those. So that's just going to add a little bit more contrast. You need, hey, shh. Uh, which is the blacks. And so you can see that that added a little bit more detail into the black stitching. So it doesn't look so, uh, so, um, faded. And so now again, I'll just show you the before and after. So I'm going to group these. So this is where we started. You little stinker. She turned ah! off the <laughs> image layer. So this is where we started. Ah! Can you not? please. And this is where we ended up with just two levels layers. So it really did add a lot of brightness and, um, and it was pretty simple to do. So, um, let's go to the next one here. Uh, now I actually, I, um, I expanded the background, so that's why there's that white stripe there. Uh, but this is the before, so you can see this is kind of dark, and then um, this is the after. Here, so let's close this group. I'm going to turn this off. I'm actually going to go back to the very beginning for this one, just so you can see what I did. Okay, so this is where we started. The first thing I noticed with this image is that... Um, the white balance was a little off and, you know, I can definitely tell that this was taken on like a solid white background. So I'm going to show you something super cool that you can do with levels. Um, we're going to go into levels. I'm going to use this dropper right here. And um, there are three droppers. So the top is your um, blacks. The middle is your um, your grays, your midtones, and the, the bottom is your whites. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to click here. And um, you can see that that white balanced it because it got rid of, there was like some yellow. Um, and I know sometimes it's hard to see on compute, like a screen cast of a computer, but there was a little bit of a yellow tone there. So that fixed that right up. And then it also brightened it a lot, but we also need to brighten it just a tad bit more. So I'm going to boost up the midtones a little bit here. I'm going to bring this in, which is going to bring in some of the contrast. And uh, now I have it boost that a little bit more. Um, so now I have it overall, I did like some fine tuning. So that was just the one, the one levels layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it. And when I crop this, I'm going to do it the Etsy, um, the ratio for an Etsy limit listing. And you want to make sure you're on your background layer here. Okay, can you not please? Um, and I'm going to check the box that says content aware crop and I'm going to crop this and center it up, get it where I want it and press the check mark. And that is going to fill in that blank spot. And so now I have, um, so this was just one layer. So it, it brightened it, it edited it and everything. If I wanted to have this like perfectly white, I could go in and I could add another levels layer. And I could brighten the whites a little bit more. Um, and you can see that that got it more to like a perfectly white background. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty simple um, edit there. All right. And does anybody, before I go to the next, the next image, does anybody have any questions? I'll give you guys a minute or two to see if you guys have any questions. Because I know there's a little bit of a delay.
All right, I don't see any questions. So now we're going to go on to this one. And for this one, um, I did use levels mostly. But then I also had a couple bonus things that I'm going to show you with this one because I think they uh, are relevant. So, um, so here is the before and here's the after. So just really nice, light and bright. So let's turn this off. Um, okay. Oh, before I go any farther. Okay. I do see a question. Um, if you have a really old uh, version of Photoshop, will it have the same layer features? And the answer is it should. Um, they're like the very first version of Photoshop, like 20 years ago or something, which I don't even think would run on any modern computer, didn't have layers. But, um, but like going forward, the layers and masks, that's kind of the cornerstone of Photoshop. So you should have that. Um, you won't have like the cool content aware crop or, um, but you should have levels because that's like one of the most basic adjustments and then um, and then layers. So, I mean, you should now. Um, I do recommend everyone the Photoshop plan um, from from Adobe. Let me just real quick. get these off here. OK, but um, you should you should be good. You should be able to do most of what I'm showing you here. So uh, for this image, let's go back here. For this image, again, I'm just going to add the levels layer. I'm going to, so the levels is a histogram. And so if your histogram is falling short, like so if you don't have this white graph on the ends here, then it means that you have, you're falling short of some of your tones in the histogram. So what you can do is you can bring in, so you can see that added a lot of brightness. Um, you can bring these in and it's really going to add a lot of like brightness and contrast to your image. And then I like, to, if you really want to go for that light bright look, I like to boost the midtones just slightly. So you can see with just a few little clicks, um, it really made that image kind of pop a little bit more. And then the last thing that I did with this, well, actually I did two more things with this, but one thing I wanted to show you was how you can so there were some uh, some reflections here, and the reflections are great because, you know, reflections, you know, without reflections, it would look flat. Uh, but if a reflection is kind of distracting, there is a really cool way that you can get rid of, um, get rid of those reflections in Photoshop. So I'm going to get my eyedropper tool here, and I'm actually going to sample the color that is not the reflection. So this is the reflection, and then there's like the not the reflection next to it. So I want to sample that in this image here. So I'm going to click on my background. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and then I'm just going to sample that color. You can see here that it actually, um, this little square changed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer and it's making it the color that I just sampled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to the top of the stack. So I'm just clicking and dragging, bring it to the top of the stack. I'm going to click on my layer mask here and I'm going to invert my layer mask. Right now it's all white. I want it to be all black. So I'm going to press Command I. And so now that went away. And now I'm going to click here. I'm going to change this blend mode to darken. So we're changing the blend mode to darken. And now I'm going to click back on my layer mask. I'm going to get my brush tool. I want my brush tool to be white because white reveals. I'm going to bring my opacity down though. I'm going to bring it down to about 25%. And now I'm going to paint over the reflection. And as I paint over the reflection, and I can build up if I need to, it's making that reflection just not um, quite so noticeable. So here you go. This is the before and this is the after. So see, it kind of gets rid of... Um, that really bright reflection. And I can even go over here just to kind of even out the tones here. And um, it just gets rid of those really um, intense reflections. And then the final thing that I'm going to show you is just a fun thing that um, 
that I think can just help really bring some brightness if you're really going for light and bright images. So again, I'm going to sample colors, but I'm going to sample, um, I'm going to sample the color of the wall here. So I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm going to sample the color of this wall. And I am going to go to the gradient layer. And so now it's made a gradient of that wall color. I'm going to change it and I'm going to put the gradient up in this corner. So then, um, so it's kind of like coming down this way. So I just do that by clicking here. You can change the angle of your gradient. So I want it up in this corner. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to pull this to the top of the stack. And I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light. And I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little bit. But you'll see that that just added some light up there in the corner. It just really added a little bit more brightness to the overall image. So let's group these together. So you can see here is where we started. And then here's the after. So it was just a nice um, bright white edit. So... Um, so those were the three edits that I had for you. Thank you so much for um, volunteering your images. So here is the first one, the before and after. Here is the second one. Get these. I guess I didn't do that. Here is um, the before and after there. And then we have this one, the before and after there. So hopefully that was really helpful to you guys. Levels is probably one of my favorite tools in Photoshop because it is a really powerful tool and it actually does even more stuff that I didn't even get to cover today. It is um, really fun to play with. So I suggest playing with the levels adjustment layer. Um, one thing I do just want to caution you when you're adding your levels, you always want to add it as an adjustment layer. Um, because that is a non-destructive edit and it has that layer mask. There's another way that you can add levels. It's going to image adjustments um, and then going to levels, which is just going to open up your um, the levels window, but it's going to make a permanent adjustment to your image that the only way you can get rid of it is to go back and um, undo in your history. And with this, if I make a mistake with my levels, I can go back and change it again and again, or I can simply just delete the layer and then it goes away. So we always want to make sure that we're following non-destructive, uh, non-destructive um, editing practices. Uh, while I have you on here, I do want to let you guys know, and I'm going to be making an announcement in the group, but um, as you've know, as you've started to notice, I've made a lot of changes and I'm trying to, um, I'm redoing my branding and kind of changing things around. And I'm going to be updating a lot of the courses that I have and a lot of, um, a lot of different things. And in, in that, um, and because of that, I'm offering you, um, everyone in the group, I'm offering just until um, December 31st, so um, until the first of the year, I am offering um, what I call the whole shebang. So I'm offering you everything that I've ever put out um, in my store. So the advanced graphics for sublimation, um, the autumn actions, uh, my mock-up course, my Photoshop basics course, which is, it just teaches you like everything you need to know about Photoshop for, you know, everything that I did with levels, um, everything, um, you know, I go through everything and they're like bite sized little lessons. And so that course alone is a hundred dollars. Um, but you get everything, um, for a hundred dollars. So you get everything, you get all of my actions, all of my, um, all of my Photoshop actions, all of my Lightroom presets, um, my steam brushes, you get absolutely everything in my shop, everything that I've ever put out for $100. And you can also, um, you can pay once $100 or you can do four payments of $30 because I know it's Christmas and money's tight. Um, but this is really going to help you guys so much with um, Photoshop and everything. So um, I did just want to throw that out there if anybody is interested. And I have a special code for the VIP group. It is um, fat VIP, which is P H A T V I P, and that will get you an extra ten percent off. So you can get all of it for ninety dollars, which is like kind of crazy. 
And I've probably lost my mind a little bit, but then you also will get um, any of the updates that I'm making to the courses because I'm um, now I'm not making a lot of like content updates, but I'm going to have to re-record some stuff because with the branding and I think I, I mentioned Product Shop Pop a couple places. So I'm going to have to re-record things. And, you know, just like with anything, uh, you get, you know, I get more comfortable <laughs> with recording and probably a little bit better at my craft than when I first made some of these. So that is that. I'm going to, um, I will post a link for you if any of you are interested in that. Um, and then I also have, um, a, it, some people have bought multiple things, but I also have a coupon code if anybody wants to complete their collection. So I'll have a, a coupon code for you guys too. So if you're like, well, I don't, you know, I've already bought all that stuff, but I really want the autumn magic um, actions. I will have that for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Um, let's just go back. Let's look again at those before and after that you can do with just levels, which is pretty cool. So again, um, the before, the after, the before, the after, and then, um, the before, the after. So, um, so seriously, like take some time today and play with levels because I think you'll be like, oh my gosh, where has this been my whole life? And let me know if you guys have any questions as you're going through and you're watching. And thank you so much for watching. This was kind of a short Fat Tuesday tutorial, but uh, it was a crazy week for me uh, last week getting stuff ready because uh, I don't know if you guys know, but all of my kids are born from like the end of November to the or mid November to mid December, they're all within a month, which also falls, you know, and also like Thanksgiving and Christmas fall in between there. So this time of year is super crazy for me last year or last week was my, my daughter's birthday dinner and stuff. So we just, um, things have been crazy. So this was kind of a quick tutorial, but I hope that you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know if you guys have any questions, and um, I will see you guys next week on Fat Tuesday. Bye.